Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and in this video we are going to cover editing the layout of the UE4 panels. Now the first thing that I want to point out is that there are a lot of panels within the UE4 editor and we will be covering the arrangement of those panels rather than covering what those panels actually do. So the first thing that I'm going to point out really is that you can resize virtually any of the panels within the UE4 interface and it works a lot like most other applications. You can just hover in between or at the top or you know the right of these panels and you can see that my cursor is changing to this sort of bar with arrows on both sides and if I just click and drag then I'm resizing this panel. And you you know a lot of this is going to be personal preference based on how you want your own interface to work. I just want to show you, you know, how you can resize things and move them around more easily. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is actually moving a panel to somewhere else. So let's say, for example, I want to move my world outliner. I can simply click on the tab up here, drag it, and as you can see, when I start dragging inside of another panel space, this um, like white gooey overlay occurs inside of that panel that splits that panel into five sections you know so we've got one on the left top right and bottom and the middle section is basically just like no man's land I cannot pay, place a panel there but I can place it on the left or the top if I wanted to or on the left uh, or sorry yeah on the left um, but you can also get a little more creative you know so if I wanted to have my world outliner next to my details panel I could do that you know and basically all I did there was put the world outliner on the left of the details panel and again you can do this in each of these different panels right I actually like to have it over here like this so that way I can see everything at the same time um, space can get a little crunched you know when you're doing this so um, be sure to keep that in mind when you're messing with the tabs is that you know at the end of the day you really want your viewport to be as big as possible right and that's going to take us into our next sort of movement or panel movement mode and what you can actually do is move a panel and make it like a hidden tab so I can actually take the modes panel down here and drop it and now I have tabs for content browser and the modes panel and that's kind of cool. Um, one, that's pretty useful for these two because um, the modes has a lot of the um, you know classes that you're going to have to use every once in a while, and the content browser has a lot of the same static meshes as the modes. Um, so it, it, you know it's pretty easy to just click and change between these pretty quickly, and um, you can resize it down. You know. So, we're, so that we're getting a really big viewport. Now one um, sort of bug that I found with this is in the place modes panel you see that we have this left sidebar over here and when I make this pretty small so you know let's say that I just want to have a really big viewport then I cannot scroll on this left sidebar. I can scroll on the main section over here but I just can't scroll over here so I can't get down to see like volumes or all classes um, so I mean, again if you make it really small then you're missing several of these classes over here of objects so I mean you can still search if you know what you're looking for um, you know or maybe if you placed it recently you can look in your recently placed um, but it, it is kind of annoying you know that you can't scroll over on this guy. I mean, I understand because tabs aren't really supposed to be scrollable, but um, it is a little annoying as well that you can't do that. Okay, so the next thing I'm actually going to cover really quickly is that there are ways of dropping in a panel that are not on top of another panel. And I'm just going to again use the modes panel here, move it out, and you can actually take it all the way up to the top here and drop it on the top of everything. Now that doesn't make a whole lot of sense right there, right? Like, why would you do that? And to be honest with you, I don't know why you'd do that. Um, but you can, and you can do the same thing on 
Well, if I can get it. Oh, sorry. There we go. Do the same thing on the bottom, on the left, and on the right. So, um, I mean, this may be something you would want to do with your viewport, for example. So, if I took my viewport, there we go. Sorry about that. I can take my viewport, move it over, and maybe take up the right side, you know, and then um, sort of mess with these again. So I'm really not liking the way that this dude is getting broken out here. I guess what I could do, theoretically, is move the details panel over here and just reduce the size of that I'm not really feeling that layout though yeah and that's one thing that you're gonna run into a lot when you're sort of resizing their the UE4 panels and you know messing with this stuff is that it can be really difficult to get a good um, layout going uh, just because of the how the layouts work a lot of the time um, you know it's, it's can, it can be fairly challenging to get something that functions well okay so the next thing I'm actually going to talk about is hiding these t these toolbar tabs up here and to do that you've probably actually noticed that some of them are already hidden to do that all you have to do is right click and click hide tab and that actually gives you a little more real estate to work with now you can't hide tabs that are grouped together like this obviously because if you hid those there'd be no way to change between them but on these other tabs you know you just you can just close them and it just gives you a little more real estate um, kind, kind of like a cleaner looking interface here okay now one of the final things that I'm going to point out is something that you may have never noticed before and that is the different editor windows within Unreal Engine 4 now if you look at this top tab up here right it's kind of got like this sort of uh, bezier tab style to it whereas these down here are much more just like a rounded square you know that is because this top tab up here is referencing this level and all of these panels that we see content browser modes um, world outliner details they all relate to level editing so this is sort of like our parent tab okay now we also have another like parent tab for blueprints right so if I open up a blueprint then you can see again I've got like this bezier tab up top and then I've got these um, rounded corners inside of this window and this is important to note because you can't move a blueprint uh, component tab or you know one of the children of blueprint under level and that just makes perfect sense right I mean we why would you want your blueprint tabs or your blueprint panels on the level editing um, one thing you can do though is that you can actually move this whole parent up to the top okay and that's really cool and really useful um, I actually didn't know you could do that for a while and once I found it I just immediately fell in love with it because it's way better than your blueprints opening up in a new window every time so if I open up another blueprint right now it's gonna open up up here and you may have actually noticed before that if you have your if you don't have your blueprints up top like that and you open one then it sort of does the same thing but it opens in this interface so in this window so it's basically giving you two windows right now it's giving you the level editing and the blueprint editing and that's just a really cool thing that the that Unreal Engine did um, with creating these different tabs so, so they're more of a you know dead giveaway of what of what goes where and how these things work together Okay, so the final thing that I wanted to cover in this video is, let's say you have been messing with tabs for a while, trying to get a pretty good layout, um, and you've just messed it up to the point where you can't find anything, and you just want to get back to the default layout. Well, there is a way to do that that's pretty quick, actually.
and to do that you can actually just go up to your menu bar up here go to window and then go to reset layout now when you click on this it's going to give you a little pop-up that says it requires the editor to restart and you will be prompted to save any changes um, I'm not actually going to do that because I do like this layout more so you know but if you do want if you do ever need to reset your layout you can do that okay um, okay one final note uh, before I forget is that you can actually create new windows so let's say that I'm working on a two window um, let's say that I've got two monitors set up then I can actually take my viewport or you know whatever window pop it out and drag it over to my other uh, window and this is actually kinda cool I've seen a few people do this um, where their viewport is separate from their main window and that can be useful for builds and playing through the level you know because it's it can be difficult to play through a pretty small level um, but another really cool thing about the viewport specifically is that you can have multiple viewports running at the same time okay so if I go to window viewports then I can open up another viewport okay and when I open up another viewport you can see by default then it's opening in a new window I can just maximize that guy up and now I've got a full screen viewport that I can play around with you know so I can definitely move and you know it's a little laggy I think it's probably not really enjoying the fact that I've got a second viewport and I'm recording right now but um, you, you can't you can do that so maybe you use this viewport for playthroughs or and or you could always edit on this viewport and just watch on the other one I'm not you can have up to four viewports running at uh, at once uh, which is kinda cool you know I think you can do the same thing with details right so you can have multiple details panels running at the same time and that can be useful so let's say you've got a second viewport running let me just uh, reduce the size of that guy a little bit then you can open up a second details and then once you have the second details open you can add it to your other viewport that's just another way to sort of help you uh, see what you're clicking on and maybe if you need to you know change some stuff while you're in this large viewport then you can very easily so some pretty cool stuff that you can do within the UE4 um, interface okay guys that's gonna do it for this video I uh, hope you learned something new if you did drop us a like and subscribe and as always thank you for watching